Howdy folks, I'm Keith Bowen and this is Hard Rock University. Now today's lesson is what happens inside a crusher that may cause you problems for extraction. The problem with some crushing devices is they will also tend to hold on to the gold. It can't get out of the crusher. The worst one is a ball mill. In a ball mill you have a rotating drum with a bunch of balls in it that's got ore and water with typically flotation reagents in it and such. The slurry comes in one side, gets pulverized, goes out the other. The problem is this is a significant height there and as this thing is turning it's also agitating the coarser gold particles will tend to fall to the bottom. Now in order to keep a ball mill from wearing out over time they're typically, at least in the commercial versions, covered with liner plates inside which are then removable and replaceable. That gold will often get behind those liner plates and be essentially lost forever. If you have coarse enough gold, I mean the amount of gold that can wind up in one of these ball mills is very very large and is not something you're going to be able to get out again. In my case I have an impact mill if you look at this scene from my previous video on impact milling, you can see the dead bedding at the bottom of the mill. That will tend to collect some gold. Now, I was wondering how much gold is it going to actually collect, and is it going to be the coarser particles or what? So, I took some of my better ore that I have here, crushed it up in the ball mill, some, I mean in the impact mill, some of it at least, I split it in half, and then I panned the rough crushed ore, the pulverized ore, and the stuff that was in the dead bed. This is the ore from the RC-46. It's been double run through there. As you can see there's some pretty big chunks. It's fairly coarse. That's roughly 50% 30 mesh minus. This is the output from the air classifying ball mill. As you can see, it's like flour. You can see it sticking to my fingers here. It's just not dusting off too much because it's quite humid today. This is the material from the dead bedding. As you can see, it's a coarser material. It's very fine grain, but it's coarser. It's more like you know, salt, fine table salt or something. So I panned all three, and we'll now take a close look at the actual panning results. This is the results from the RC-46 crushed material. It's significant, but nothing real exciting. These are the results from the finely pulverized output of the impact mill. You can see recovery has gone way up, or at least the, the amount of gold, which would indicate that it's useful to crush it much finer and, because it is liberating it. Here's the interesting thing. This is the material from the dead bedding inside the mill. It's even richer, which is kind of to be expected. The thing that wasn't expected was this has just as much or more fine gold, micro fine gold, than the output does. I was expecting this to be the fi finest material and this to be coarser. As it was, it's almost the same with, if anything, this having more fines. So, unexpected in one way, expected in another. That was only about a 20 pound run or less. Imagine what it would be if you put a ton or more through it. So there you have it. This particular ore is what I, is from a prospect I call the Dreamer Prime. It's a heavily oxidized ore. One would expect to get more free gold from a heavily pulverized ore. If it's not heavily oxidized, a lot of time it makes more sense to not pulverize it as much and get a heavy mineral concentrate first, then pulverize the crap out of it. Um, it depends. You just have to test these things. But clearly the dead bedding did concentrate the gold. I was a little surprised at how fine that gold was. Uh, typically it's running about 50 microns to 100 microns 
uh, with the coarser pieces up about uh, 250 microns. Um, it was surprising to me that the very fine gold was still getting concentrated well in the dead bedding, but it was also a small run. It may not be terribly representative. But any time in any process where you've got fluid flows, crushed rock and stuff, be aware that gold will settle out like a son of a gun. You don't want any place where there's a dip, a hole, any place where the, the flow can slow down, it'll tend to fill up with gold. And unless you're deliberately concentrating and cleaning it out, <laughs> you can lose a lot of gold that way. Ball mills, not real good, in my opinion, if you're crushing to free mill gold. If you're trying to crush for leaching, not so much of a problem, but even then, you're probably better off crushing, concentrating the, the coarser gravity gold, and then going to the uh, uh, leaching for the, the finer material. It all depends. But ball mills are big, they're heavy, they're not very portable, and they tend to collect gold like a gold magnet. Not very happy with those in general. Impact mills are generally going to have higher wear rates, uh, higher energy per pound crushed, things like that. However, they're small, they're highly portable, and if properly designed, the wear parts can be easily replaced, so maintenance isn't that big of an issue. Um, Rolls crushers are more efficient, but they just can't get a fine pulverization. That's, that's just one of the inherent limitations. Disc grinders just usually aren't used for production things because of the very high wear rates. They're very good in terms of you get fine pulverization, no dead bedding, but they're of limited utility in a production setting. Very common in laboratory settings. They are the instrument of choice for fine pulverizing samples. So, that's how it goes. Make sure, test your process every step of the way. Make sure you know where the gold is going, whether or not it's getting from point A to point B or getting stopped somewhere in between. Use the hand panning technique and you'll be able to tell where any gravity concentratable gold is going. If it's, you know, super fine or colloidal gold or something like that, yeah, you may just, you're probably going to have to leach anyway. But for micro-scale mining, that's pretty much beyond our, you know, the, the realm of the exercise. So, that's the, uh, the conclusion. Any place you've got any kind of dead bedding or any kind of barriers to flow, and you've got a flowing uh, ore that's finally crushed, you're going to tend to concentrate the gold. Happy prospecting, and keep it safe.